Vamos passar a transmissão. Let's begin the transmission. Agreed, the brothers that are here uh, at church receiving this transmission with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Brother, we are here to, to broadcast Sunday school, uh, a man at the church, uh, what we do every morning to our church. And this broadcast we do from uh, the, semin the seminar uh, Domingo Martins, where we had a seminar with the presence of a great number of participants. In the first period of the seminar, and the recipients, the beginners. And now we're going to bring to you, Brad, a subject that is a compliment, special compliment to the subject that we have been uh, speaking about in Sunday schools related to Abraham, Isaac, showing there the illustration in the Old Testament related to the death of Jesus and his sacrifice, his resurrection, his and the project of God, his salvation the project of God. Now we are ready here to show you another subject. Uh, I want you to keep your Bible open and the subject we are going to speak about in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24 in John 20 we're going to be speaking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus we're going to give the question to your brother and these questions are related to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus I can begin by asking those questions. But before, we're going to allow Pastor Jedi to, to make a small comment related to the subject we're going to speak with the brethren about these questions in the morning. So, brethren, peace to the Lord. Before we speak about the subject of the Sunday School, I want to greet the brethren they are gathered today in a special work in São Luís do Maranhão, in Brazil. Uh, uh, um, I want to greet them. They have a seminar with uh, many people participating. I want to send our, our praise to the church and for the presbytery and also for at this moment in which the brethren participate in the Sunday School. Since we have a little delay, I'd like to, you to write down the following texts. The brethren in the church will write down the following texts. John 2014. 2014. Put here on the... This, no, no, no. No, no question, John 2014. We are having a technical problem. Computer. Put here the text, John 2014. Just put it here. Just a biblical text, John 2014. So there was a problem. Everything is with a defect. John 2014. The other text of the word, Luke 24, 15. And Luke 24, 36. Put the jaw a little bigger. Or a blackboard, we have, which is actually green. <laughs> Luke 24, 15, and Luke 24, 15, and 24, 36. Let us read together. No, actually, Pastor Jesus, he's younger. 
Read the first text, John 20, 14. We're going to ask a question in relation to this text. John 20, 14, the text says, Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. John, we just read. Good enough. Let's stop here. Let's stop here. So the first thing that I want here is to know how the Lord Jesus manifested to this woman in a prophetic way. See here, Jesus, he has been risen, and the woman, she went to look for Jesus in his tomb, and she, she finds herself speaking with a person that she thought was the guy that took care of the garden. So the first thing, the first question is the following. In this meeting, has the woman recognized the, Jesus, the reason Jesus, yes or not? No. That's the question. You're reading the text? No, you answer. In this question, we are asking if, if the woman has recognized Jesus. I met Jesus, he was this way in this ministry. Has she recognized Jesus? Yes or not? So the answer is no. She didn't recognize Jesus. So now, let's go prophetically. Now she will recognize Jesus. I want you, brethren, to understand this recognition prophetically. She recognized Jesus when? When? Now we're going to give you 30 seconds to answer. When? When Jesus called her by her name. When he said, Mary. Then she recognized Rabboni, which means master. Then she recognized Jesus. It's interesting that three days, my brother, pay attention. Three days after the death of Jesus, they didn't know, no longer recognize Jesus. They, she, they did it because they even forgot about his appearance. They were looking for his appearance, his picture. They would never recognize Jesus because Jesus does not reveal himself through a picture or a, a physical appearance, but he reveals himself through a sign. And his sign to her it was to call her by her name. So salvation now, now is related to this. After the resurrection of Jesus, salvation has, he has to reveal himself. He is the one who reveals himself. It doesn't matter uh, if you make a lot of effort to understand Jesus. If he was, he has to reveal himself. He has to call you by your name. Has Jesus called you by your name? When Jesus solved, has he called you by your name? Well, this was one way. So now Pastor Jesus is going to go to the second, second text. Now we have here the second text in Luke and uh, chapter 24, 15, verse 15. The text says the following. And it happened that as they were going, speaking among themselves and asking questions, to one another, the same Jesus came close and was going with them. Verse 15. So verse 15, so it was while they conversed, conversed 
and reason that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So here he speaks of the way in which Jesus appeared to them in the way to Emmaus in verse 20, chapter 24 of Luke in verse 15. So as the disciples in the way to Emmaus, they, as they recognized Jesus, According to the text, they did not recognize. Now, you open Luke 24, verse 30 and 31. 30 and 31. It says the following. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Very well. Now, here comes the question. Have they recognized Jesus? Why? Because they have recognized Jesus on their way to Emmaus? Yes or not? They had not recognized Jesus. And they recognized Jesus when? On the breaking of the bread. So the, que the prophetic question is, why breaking of the bread? The bread had two minutes to discern why breaking of the bread? Why have they recognized Jesus after he broke the bread? Oh, because he gave grace. No, no. But they have not recognized Jesus because Jesus gave grace. They recognized Jesus because when he broke the bread. Why? Two minutes. Can answer? Who can answer this question? Yes. But he wants a prophetic. Who can say why when Jesus broke the bread, he was recognized by the disciples? Marcus said that he had a way of breaking the bread. Only Jesus, because uh, before, early, they had... Exactly. But what we want, the, the, the approach that we want is the prophetic meaning. What prophetically it speaks, uh, represents to the church. The death of Jesus, isn't it? The death. His death, because when Jesus breaks the bread, you recognize the interior of what? The bread. Right? So that, so when you, through the death of Jesus, we begin to have access exactly to the interior of what it is the kingdom of God, not only from the outside. You know, don't, not only see the bread there, you begin to be a participant, you have access to the blessings of the Lord. What was only for Israel, the promise was upon Israel only. And when the Lord Jesus came and died, then he was able to reach everybody. So, the gospel is for everybody. Salvation is for everybody. Because on the breaking of the bread, each one of us has access to the blessing of God. Exactly. It means that Jesus is the bread of life, right? I'm breaking the bread. Exactly. When Jesus is the bread of life, and now we, now we can feed of, of what is the riches of the gospel, of what is uh, God's complete project. Amen? Anybody else wants to make a, a, another remark? So let us continue. Thank, 
fica tranquilo e começa sem som. É, eu tenho que esperar. Ele vem sem som, começa sem som. Tá. The bread. See, my bread. He could have said, I am the Jesus. No. He, he broke the bread. The bread was a type of a, uh, like a cookie. Uh, unleavened bread. It, it, you ate it by breaking the bread. So breaking the bread it speaks of uh, uh, his death. It was broken. He went to for love of, for, of us. He was the broken bread. He, and the broken bread was the food that he has given us. He gave to his disciples. was the food. So Jesus reveals himself in his death by breaking himself. And in his resurrection, when he feeds because he gave his blood, is the food that he gave to his disciples. So what we want here tonight is to is that you understand that the resurrection of Jesus is is a very important point in, in, in the Bible because it was not Jesus that was presenting himself. It was not a prophet of Nazareth that was presenting himself. It was not the man that had done miracles. The man of parables was that extraordinary. It was not the man that was suffering in Calvary. Now it was a God that reveals. So salvation is revelation of Jesus. If Jesus has not revealed himself, we, you are just a Christian, religious, and that's it. Salvation, it doesn't mean anything. So salvation is in function of him revealing himself, and he reveals himself through his spirit. So he was already being glorified. Nobody touched me, because now I'm no longer the Jesus that was walking in the neighborhoods of Jerusalem and Judah and Samaria. He was not a traveler. No, it was a Lord that was going to manifest in a different way to what uh, history was presenting. He is not the man of the history. Jesus is the God that reveals himself. So those are the mysteries. If he does not reveal himself, so let's go. My brethren, you observe that in the first meetings that, that, were, that happened in a sequence, there were others that happened. But these three meetings with Mary, observe, no, no more. But there were others, oh, but the other Marys and, and Joanna and others, they were in the, the tomb, but they didn't meet Jesus. And the question I'm asking here is about the meeting with Jesus. They heard that Jesus had been risen from the dead. And it's very interesting, and I want to highlight to you, brother and everyone, to read the text of the Bible, to see the riches and the beauty of the resurrection, the conversation between the disciples, and, hey, Peter, go ahead. And the woman, she had already spoken. The women have already given us the news, but they didn't believe. Not the same. So they ran out and to the to the tomb, and the one came faster than the other, and they saw from outside, and one kneeled down to see the the sheets. So the description of the resurrection of Jesus is sometimes extraordinary because there is the humanity in the interest of those that were going through the resurrection, which is something glorious. I can imagine the joy and the emotion that they may be having when they were going through this moment. They were so emotional that they didn't understand it. They were not understanding anything. But after Jesus resurrected, nobody believed. They only believed after Je they saw Jesus. Nobody believed because somebody else told them, Hey, I'm bringing the news. Jesus is risen. Here, my, my brother, Jesus is not a resurrection that is given from one person to another. The resurrection is in your life. It doesn't matter if you want somebody to resurrect, be resurrected for you because Jesus 
what matters you having the resurrection in your life to know that he exists in your life it's not uh, a message hey jesus is good uh, a message uh, it doesn't matter man it is an experience personal experience with god so let's go to the last one Please, Pastor Jesus is going to read. Luke 24, verse 20, 36, when the Lord manifest for the third time, third time to the disciples, the eleven disciples, the verse said the following. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the same Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Very well. The question is this. The brethren will see the text in which Jesus reveals himself. Verse 39. Verse 39. How Jesus reveals. And let's read. So, you brethren, uh, I want to see the discerning of the revelation of Jesus. Verse 39 says the following. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. He wanted to show the following. What did he want to show? He reveals himself now to the group that was there as the body. You see, he reveals himself as the body because the disciples, the eleven that were there, Jesus is now revealing himself as a body. See my hand, the ministry. I'm going to reveal myself through the ministry in the spirit. From now on, revelation is through the ministries of the Holy Spirit, or through the ministry that the Holy Spirit is going to be raising and gave power to. So in the other text he says, on my side, Jesus is speaking of the wounded body. So the body, he was speaking that Jesus reveals through the body as a church, as a body, a church that suffered, as a church that suffers, but that manifests, manifests his con their connection with him him as a wounded body, a wounded body, a man of pain that is experiencing work, is the church. That's the discerning. So the story is beautiful. But Jesus wants to reveal himself not through the microphone. He doesn't reveal himself through like fireworks. No. The church is now going to have a big, make a big celebration. Jesus doesn't want to manifest in a huge celebration. He wants the church to manifest. The church with trials is church that uh, manifests work. A church is going to overcome through faith. It's not what we, what we are seeing, but what the church is living in. So now we came to a, a certain point for your understanding because we have changed a little bit the way we interact. I know that you brought, may have felt the difference because we enter into the prophetic, the understanding. So Jesus didn't present to the, his disciples and to those that he knew as a man. Now he presents himself as God. Now he presents himself as the one who reveals. It's different. So the way in which he presents himself is now through the revelation. And he gives his ministry to the Holy Spirit. And he will speak about me of, of all things. And he will manifest. And he will take care of your life. This is the Holy Spirit. So it is very different conversion, the experience of salvation when Jesus reveals himself to you, as opposed to just knowing, only knowing the story of Jesus. The story of Jesus was not worth anything, not even for the disciples of Amos, not even for the women. They forgot about everything. There's a ghost that's coming. 
Others thought, no, 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 you don't know that Jesus suffered so much. This is just a speech. So the gardener, have you uh, taken the body of Jesus? So now you ask yourself, that woman went to bring spice. Was it something bad? No. But her mind was a mind of religion. She was a religious woman. She didn't know what revelation was. So she only understood what revelation was after the resurrection of Jesus. Very well, my brethren. Can we stop? I want to send you my embrace. If Pastor just said another word, let, uh, what, you can complete it. So I just want to speak of an aspect. It's when the text speaks of a woman that meets the Lord in the tomb. She immediately she finds someone that she identifies with someone that she already knew in that place. So this person that she knew who was the gardener there was at the mind of this person person to look at Jesus and identify Jesus as a man that takes care of the, the material things, the earthly things, and the gardener was a gardener. He was taking care of the things that were on the ground uh, in the garden, in, around the tomb, and this is has a lesson for us, because the Lord Jesus, that our souls are anxious for Him, they, He's not only somebody that came to give us a salvation, you know, to guide us to what is earthly, but He guides us to what is eternal, because He calls us by name, like He called that woman for her name, and He wrote our name in the Book of Life through salvation in the Lord Jesus. This is a word just to compliment to He lived, uh, He lived uh, the historical image and enter, enters into the prophetical. More death and resurrection is this. He leaves that. This is what many people don't understand. People remain in the historical, but the most important aspect is the prophetic. It's the result of his resurrection. Is how he will manifest from that point on, calling you by your name, showing signs of his presence, and everything that we have already seen in the text here. So for the next for the next Sunday, we're going to show tomorrow on the next day on the satellite uh, the subject that I would like you, brethren, to participate, because when Jesus went to Calvary. They place a crown of thorns on him, uh, a rope of a red pur uh, rope. They hit him. So many aspects. You know, all of them. You know why? Just to say that Jesus is not the Son of God. To say that Jesus was not God. Just to say that he was not a king. Just to say that he was not a prophet. All the work that the enemy that did was to remove the, charist, the characteristic of the project of salvation. So I want to give you the texts and also I'm going to give to you the meaning of each text. So the confrontation and you have to put everything together and organize. This text is related to this aspect and this other text is related to this other aspect. There are five or six aspects that we are going to uh, approach. So, once again, I want to give you a piece of the Lord there. A couple of uh, pastors from Costa Rica, Costa Rica and New Zealand. May God bless you. Amen, my brother. Any question? Any question? Let's sing then a song. So as we prepare for the closure.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us have two words of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we want to praise Him. Glorify because You have revealed Yourself to us every day. We thank You because You are a living God, a powerful God that called us by our, Your name, our name. We thank You because You give us assurance of salvation because you give us um, uh, shoes of eternal life we have not left us without instruction we has you have reviews and yourself on us to us every day thank you for bringing joy to our hearts and have prepared us to go to heaven we praise you for everything in the name of Jesus amen Lord, I want to praise you and exalt your holy name because our heart desire to be with you. Lord, we want to see Maranatha being fulfilled in our lives. We praise you, Lord, because we feel that very soon your son will be coming to take his bride for him. We praise you for this so great love that one day has have called us to be in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for your care. We praise you for because without you we cannot do anything. We praise you, Lord, and praise you for everything that you have done in our to our lives, and because everything that you ought to do in the name of Jesus. And the children have do they have a song prepared? Let's hear the children. And soon after, we're going to finish. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us stand up and pray for the children and the intermediary as well. The teenagers, the adolescents may kneel down. One of the deacons may pray.
in this world, brother, they can shine, that, that your light can shine bright through their lives, Lord. Lord. And even in their uh, young age, Lord, that they could display a testimony of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for them, their families, Lord. Keep them in your care, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord Father, we praise your name and ask God that you may this morning receive our worship. The service that we offer to you is our adoration to you, that you may turn into blessings to each home here represented. Even those that were unable to come here this morning, that you may visit them and reach them, operate your great love, operate salvation, operate health and miracles that we may always have the hands of the Lord stretched to bless us. Receive our worship, the prayer that we ask in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord is saved through Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to have a meeting with the women, all the women, Group C, also any other group, Group A is also going to have a meeting. Have, have group B, has a Group B have a meeting yesterday? Will they have a meeting to, today? Amen. We're going to have tomorrow. It's important this tomorrow at 8 p.m. have a special meeting special service tomorrow night at 8 p.m. All the brethren they have, they have a, a function, all the workers, deacons, intercession group, and the teachers, the women, everybody is invited to be here tomorrow. Who has a function at the church as we have we're conclaiming them to be here. Hollander will be here as well. The praise group, the musicians, song tonight, um, service tonight at 7.30. Let us pray for the Lord to give a blessing and save lives. May the Lord use each one of us. Peace to the Lord. We went yesterday to Hollandale, a group a youth group went to Hollandale. It was a great blessing there. They were invited to be there. So we went there yesterday. We sang. I am a part, part of the youth group. Sang was a great blessing. It was a gift for the Church of Hollandale. Peace to the Lord.